Hey and welcome back to another video and in today's video we're going to be looking at picker and picker styles in Swift UI. We won't be using date picker in this video but if you want to learn more about this then check out my video date picker in Swift UI. A picker is a control that allows users to select from a range of options. Let's look at a simple example now that allows us to select from a group of names. So the first thing we need to do is actually create a collection of names that we'll be presenting within our picker. So let's create a constant at the top called names. This is the collection of names that we're going to show within our picker. So the next thing that we need to do is build a source of truth for our picker to read and write to in terms of what is the selected item within it. So let's create a state variable for the selected person. So as you can see here, our names, because it's an array of strings, we're going to store that within our selected name, and which is also a string. So depending on the option that someone chooses within our picker, this is where it's going to be stored. Cool, so now we need to create a picker that uses our source of truth and reads from our array of names. So let's create a basic picker with a label and we'll also add a text view on top of the picker to show our selected name. Cool, so as you can see here, we've added our picker onto the screen. Now with this label, it doesn't seem to get rendered on the screen um, for some reason. So I'm not too sure if this is a bug or not, or picker labels just don't get rendered but you can see that we have a property for our picker selection and what we have here is a binding to our selected name so whenever someone selects a value within our picker it's going to update this value now within our picker we have a for each loop and what this for each loop is doing is it's going to loop through each individual name and it's going to uniquely identify each name so each name is going to be made unique because we're using the id slash dot self. So this is the unique identifier for each value within this array. And then what we're saying here is we're going to get the name and display it within a text on the screen. So if I just select my name here, you'll see that I actually get a picker now, but by default, I'm getting the menu option. But if I select another name like Billy, you'll see here that it updates our selected name Billy. And if I go to Bob, it updates our selected name to Bob. Now it's worth noting that when you're working with pickers, you don't actually have to do it like this when you're working with four eaches. If you wanted to, you could actually write this out manually yourself by doing the following. So you could do something like this. Now, what we're saying here is we're actually accessing the first value within the array by specifying zero because programming starts from zero. And we're also uniquely tagging our text view by saying that this here, this item here, this is the tag for this text view. And then we just continue. So for Billy, this is the text we'll go around on the screen and this is its tag. And then for the third one, this is Bob and this is its tag. So if you actually run this now, you'll notice that it actually works the exact same because you're using the tag to uniquely identify what text is associated to the values in the array. Now, you probably wouldn't want to do something like this because as you can see, as this array grows, you've got to keep on writing out more and more text and you know that isn't really maintainable. So when you're working with collections like this, your best bet is to go with an actual for each loop. I would only use this approach here if you have maybe one or two values but if you have a collection then your best bet is to use a for each loop so it can uniquely handle the tagging and identify the text for you so let's just delete this now and then let's undo this cool so we noticed that our style for our menu is the menu style but what we can do if we wanted to is actually choose a different range of picker styles as well with an application so what we're going to do now is actually look at all the different possible styles available to us so i'm just going to do this now and then we'll break it down all right cool so we're going to work our way from top to bottom so our first picker style here that we have is menu and as you can see this is very similar to what we had before where we had our menu so we've already gone over that but our next one is pretty different called inline and this just gives us an inline picker where we can just scroll through all the options and if we go down to our third one we have our picker style segmented so this is how you add a segmented control within swift ui so you'll create a picker and give it a style of segmented so you get these options here. So our next style here is wheel, which is very similar to inline. The only difference between these two, as far as I'm aware of, is the way they handle um, views within their containers whenever you add them in. 
So we will again also fills up um, its container and you can scroll through the options. And then finally, the last option you have is automatic. So what automatic will do is it will actually choose for you which picker style it thinks is appropriate depending on the device that you're working on. So because we're on an iPhone here, we get the menu. But if it was on like a Mac application, this may change to something like a drop down. So it just depends on what system it is that you're working with. But you might have noticed as well that we actually have a bit of a problem here. So when we actually run our application in our SwiftUI preview for the first time, you'll notice that the selected name is actually not set to anything. So how can we actually resolve this? Well, what we can do is within our SwiftUI view on our VStack, we can actually say on a pair, we want to select the default selected name. So let's do that now. So by applying this onto our VStack, what we're saying here is that we want the selected name to be the first value within our names array. And if it is nil, then we'll just set it to an empty string so we don't have to force unwrap it. So now if we just stop this and then run it again, you'll notice now that my name is the first name and that's the default value. So we looked at the picker and the inline and the wheel look the exact same. So you may be wondering what is the actual difference? Well, we can't see this in a scroll view or a lazy stack, but we can actually see the difference in a list and forms because they have ways that they style them. So what we're going to do now is actually create a Swift UI file called list example, and then we'll copy the state properties and names from our content view into this file so we can see the differences between them. So let's create this new Swift UI file. Then let's add a list onto the screen. So let's just to remove this text and then we'll just type out list. Cool. So if you've never worked with lists before, what this is, is it's a component that allows you to display views in a single column with rows within it. So this is good when you want to build apps like, you know, Twitter that have a feed. And now let's actually copy our wheel and inline example from our content view into this list. Now you should see the pickers, but now you can actually see the difference between them. So compared to our content view where, we, where they both looked the exact same, if we just go to our content view here, so you can see here how they both look the same. Now, because we put this in a list, we now get two different options. So if I just run this on the SwiftUI preview, you'll notice that our list wheel still looks the same and we can still interact with it like a wheel, but now our inline picker looks different. Instead, now we have a label at the top left-hand side and we can also choose the options that we want in line. So this is really good if you have like, you know, settings within your app, like let's say choosing an appearance theme. So if you had the theme like dark mode, light mode or automatic, you probably want to use this UI rather than using a wheel because it's an inline option. Sweet. So now let's actually see what all the other pickers look like when we put them inside of a list. So what I'm just going to do is go back in here I'm just going to copy every single picker that we had um, within the VStack, or I should say every view that we had in the VStack, and I'm just going to paste that within the list like so. Cool. And now you should see each picker within our list. So we'll start from the top. So our first one here is our menu, and you can see this looks pretty much the same. And we've already been through the inline option, and you can see our segmented control, our wheel, and then finally you can see automatic. So it's worth noting here that with our list, you can see that they automatically get this like white, you know, background around them compared to our VStack. And that's because with lists, they actually have their own stylings that you can apply to them. But by default, this is actually giving it the automatic list style, which is why you get this almost like form setting control look within your Swift UI preview. So now this does work. And if you actually look at our array, it looks fine, but this something like this is actually possible. So because we're using strings, I'm actually able to repeat my name twice. Now, if I repeat my name twice in this array of um, names, you'll notice that when I select the second one, it actually doesn't know that I'm selecting the second one because both of these are the same. So it's not actually unique. So when you're actually working with pickers, you actually want to provide it with an object that's actually unique and you can also make it type safe as well and we can accomplish this by using the identifiable protocol on our own objects so let's undo this now and see how we can do that so i'm just going to uncomment this and then what we're going to do is create a new swift ui view called flavors view okay cool 
And what I'm going to do is just write out a model that's going to represent the ice cream flavors that we're going to be working with. You, if you look at our struct here, we actually could use the name to uniquely identify which ice cream flavor it is that we want to, you know, provide to the picker and someone can select. But again, because it's a string, it's completely possible that someone could actually add in a duplicate flavor of the same name. So how can we make this unique? Well, we can do that by using the identifiable protocol. So let's add this in now. By giving our struct the identifiable protocol, we actually need to conform to this protocol now as well. So one way to do this is by creating a constant ID and giving it a UUID so you can uniquely identify each flavor. So let's do that now. And one thing I realized that this should be flavor, not flavors. Cool. So now I've changed this from flavors to flavor. And what we have here is we now have our ID. So this UUID that we have here is going to be our unique identifier for each flavor. Think of it like a SKU or a product code. And it's not really possible for this to get duplicated and for us to have multiple flavors with the same ID. So now the next thing we're going to do is actually create an array of our flavors. So let's do that now. Cool, so now we have an array of our flavors as you can see on the screen here. So we have vanilla, mint and strawberry. And now what we're going to do is actually create a source of truth for our selected flavor that someone has selected. So I actually don't want to make this optional and you know give it a nil value so if we wanted to we actually could create our own extension on flavor and just give this an empty selected flavor for now so what we've got here is we've got an extension on flavor and we're creating a static constant called none which is just a nothing flavor so now our selected flavor by default is none so we can access that by using the dot non syntax so let's actually write out the logic to actually show this within a pickle so now we've added in our VStack, our text here with selective flavor that we've got shown on the screen. And we've also added in our pickle and we're doing a very similar thing to what we did in our previous example, except this time we're now using our HStack within our for each. And we're also um, using the formatter to format our price to a currency in pounds. If you want to learn more about formatting text like this, then you should check out my previous video text in swift ui now we've actually got an issue here and our picker is complaining that our flavor needs to conform to hashable we've added the identifiable protocol but this isn't actually hashable so hashable is a protocol that allows you to make your objects unique so you give it an id within a collection so that the picker can identify it quickly so let's actually apply the hashable protocol And now you should see that that fixes your error. So when you're working with structs and you want to make them unique, you need to make sure that you apply the identifiable and the hashable protocol. So if we hit resume now, and if we actually run this, you should notice that when you start scrolling, it's actually not working. So you may be wondering why is that not working? Well, there's a few things here. So as you can see with our for each, because this time we're not actually using strings, we don't actually have to specify the identifier for each flavor. This is automatically picked up because our struct is identifiable and it's using the ID that we specified here. But this um, gives us a problem. So because we're not using the ID path anymore, what we need to do now is we actually need to give our HStack a tag so that we can specify that this is the specific ID for this item when it's loops through each one in the array. So in order to do that, what we need to do is on our HStack, just type out dot tag. And then after doing that, you'll notice that the tag takes in a hashable. And like I said before, the hashable protocol is what's used to uniquely identify objects within a collection. So we want to give it the tag of the whole flavor that we're looping through. So let's give it the tag. Cool. So now what we're saying here is that when it loops through each flavor, it's going to use the flavor object here. So this struct as its tag. So now when you actually loop through it, you should see that your text is updating and working fine because we're uniquely telling the picker that this is the tag item for each one in the array.
So one final thing that I want to go over is how we can actually use pickers with enums. So enums provide us with another way to make our code even more type safe and we can actually create a set of unique options. So let's create a new file and this time we'll call it anime view. So within our anime view, what we're going to do is create a set of options within our enum. I'm going to create our favorite animes that I think are popping at the moment. Okay, cool. So I've got my Enum anime here and I've got my different cases. So I've got Demon Slayer, Attack on Titan and Boku no Hero. But what we want to do is actually give our anime its own individual title so we can actually render some text nicely on the screen. So we'll go do that with an extension. So let's do that now. Okay, cool. So now our anime, depending on the case that we are on, we're able to access this property called title and this will return a string to us so if it's demon slayer it'll give us this if it's attack on titan it'll give us this and if it's boku no hero it'll give us this as well so in order to actually use this in our picker we actually need to follow what we did with our struts and actually apply the hashable and identifiable protocols onto our enum so that we're able to uniquely identify each case and also make them unique within our for each loop but before we do that, I want to actually add the case iterable protocol and this allows us to create an array of all our cases for free. So let's do that now. Cool. So by adding this protocol to your enums, you actually automatically get an array of all the possible cases within your enum. And we'll actually see how we're able to use that when we actually work with our pickle. So now the next thing that we're going to do is actually add in our identifiable and our hashable protocols. So let's do that now. And now because we've done this, we actually need to give our enum a way to conform to the identifiable protocol and make it unique. So in order to do that, we're just going to say that we're going to use the case of itself to uniquely identify each one in the enum. So let's do that now. Okay, cool. So like I said before, in order for the enum to uniquely identify itself with the identifiable protocol, we're just saying here that we're going to use self. So it's going to use each case as its unique ID. So now let's actually add in a source of truth and also the property that our picker will read from. Okay, cool. So as you can see here, we're using our state property and it's using our enum as the type. And because we use the case iterable protocol, we're able to specify that we want to get all the cases and we want the default to be the first item within our array case. Now I'm false on wrapping this because this cannot ever be nil because it's always got a case defined. And we're also doing the same thing here with our array of animes that we're going to be looping through. So now we've done that, let's actually add in the logic for our picker view. And we also need to tag our text with our item to make sure that it's able to pick up uniquely which one we've selected. So what we said here is that we've got a V stack, we've got a text, I'm just going to show the selected item and we're going to use a title property that we define in our extension. And then within our picker, we're binding that to our selected item here that we store. And also as well within our picker, we have a for each loop that's going to loop through all the animes that we've defined. And it's going to use the title property as again to show that on the screen and uniquely identify each text by using the item as its tag. So each case that we loop through. So now if we actually run this, let's see what happens. As you can see here, the default is Demon Slayer because we said that we want to use the first one in our enum here. And if I actually scroll through it, you'll notice that it actually starts to update. So what we could do here as well is we actually could improve this because we actually don't need this constant here. We could actually just directly just add in this line within our for each loop. So let's do that now. And as you can see, when we do that, it works the exact same way. Cool. All right. That's everything from me today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy it, I'd love to hear your feedback in the comment section below. Also as well, if you haven't already, I really appreciate it if you gave this video a thumbs up as well as subscribing to the channel and hitting the notification bell to get updates whenever I release a new video. That's everything from me. I'll catch you on a bit. Deuces.